Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can you please take your seats? Not take them outside, just sit on them where they are. Please be seated. Every night, and wakes him up the same way in the early bright. I got that 
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the 22nd annual Western Australian Information Technology and Telecommunications Awards Gala Presentation Dinner, otherwise known as the Waitas. My name is Jerry Gannon with the great honour to once again, for about the 20th time, to be your MC. Let me firstly acknowledge the traditional owners of these lands on which we meet and pay my respects to, the, to their elders past and present. And firstly, a big thank you to the three choirs from the Perth Modern School under the baton of Celia Christmas for that wonderful presentation. Let's, let's hear it. <laughs> we have, ladies and gentlemen, a virtual Melbourne Cup field of special guests tonight. Anyone would think there was an election close by. Uh, can I welcome, therefore, the Honourable Michael Mission, MLC, Minister for Commerce, Attorney General, representing the Premier, and Ms. Lorraine Reason, Mr. Roger Cook, MLA, Deputy Leader of the Opposition, representing the Leader of the Opposition, and Ms. Carly Lane, Mr. Tony Simpson, MLA, Minister for Local Government, the Honourable Kate Doust, MLC, Shadow Minister for Energy, Science and Innovation, Professor Lynn Beasley, the Chief Scientist of Western Australia, who will be tweeting like all night after this. <laughs> Mr. Brian Bradley, Director General of the Department of Commerce. Dr. Nick Tate, President of the Australian Computer Society. Mr. Alan Patterson, National Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Computer Society. Mr. David Cook, Chair of the ACSWA Branch Executive Committee and Mrs. Cook. Mr. Russell Yardley, Chair of the I Awards Steering Committee, Ms. Sue Finlay, the Chief Judge of Waiita, and Arnold Wong, the Chair of the Waiita Organising Committee. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please give them a big round of applause to welcome them. Well, Another year has come round, and it is actually hard to believe that we've been doing this for 22 years. 1991, we started. Look how far we've come. In 1991, the photos from this awards night were developed in a lab. On that night, half of you carried pagers, and the other half had pager envy. Back in your office, you had a container on your desk for floppy disks, and they were floppy. Uh, those of us who did access the internet, and that was few of us, we did it through dial-up. A tablet was something you took for a headache, and cloud was white, fluffy things in the sky. Uh, those of us who had mobile phones, we either had them as a permanent installation in our car, or in a briefcase that we've carried around with an air of superiority. Um, text messaging was still 10 years off. YouTube was 15 years away. We paid our bills with something called checks. Uh, laptops were only beginning to emerge. Now, they're almost obsolete. Yahoo was some pissed bloke in Northbridge crying out. <laughs> GPS was the plural of doctors. <laughs> and that was still 10 years away from being available to the ordinary members of the, the military, uh, particularly the US military, they had it 
Uh, they weren't sharing it. That was still 10 years away. Napster was someone who took a nap at his desk at lunchtime. The origin of Facebook was 13 years away. And the first smartphone, Apple's iPhone, would not appear for 16 years. And today, very few people have a mobile. We have a smart device, which is a phone, a computer, a pager, a street directory, a library, a jukebox. The list goes on and on. And today, everyone is on the internet, though our telecommunications infrastructure is still on the 20th century, um, the early part of the 20th century. At my office on the edge of Canning Vale, I cannot get ADSL. I have to have a wireless solution. This is 2013, people. But the NBN, <laughs> which promises to bring us into the 21st century, is ever so slowly snaking its way to our neighborhood. But will it reach my neighborhood on time? Will I have fiber to the home by September 14th? Will I have broadband before Malcolm gives me fraudband? <laughs> I've just come from a conference that I was doing for a local government IT. There are some people here in the audience tonight who were there. And uh, <clears throat> we had somebody from the NBN speak. And we asked them, what do we need to do? We need to actually talk to our local member of parliament, uh, whoever that might be, and tell them that we need the NBN. Whatever happens, we need the NBN. All right, written, authorized, and spoken by. Now, back to tonight. The WA Information Technology and Telecommunication Awards, the WAITAS. We've been doing this since 1991. It's been conducted by the WA branch of the Australian Computer Society. Its purpose is to recognize outstanding performance and contributions by members of the ICT community in Western Australia. And we have been watching the development of some very exciting technologies from this stage over 22 years. WAITA and the National I Awards have aligned and all WAITA winners and merits will progress to the National I Awards. In fact, last year was the first year that some of our WAITA award winners went on to the national awards. And you may ask, how did they do? They did very well. Here's how well we did. We had four winners in the national awards. In the industry domain, in the industrial application category, Transmin WA won for its RockLogic Intelligent Rock Breaker Control System. In the service domain, in the e-government category, the Department of Education and WA won for its SOEV4. In the student's domain, which is one that at Waiita we're always proud of, the tertiary student project category, Lawrence Deleuze, Akriko Garcia, Tyson Walker, and Huda Minhaj from Edith Cowan University won with their WA Police Air Wing Search and Rescue application. And the Piercy Medal, which is given nationally to somebody who has shown outstanding service and leadership, was awarded to our very own Dr. Mel Bryce. We did good people. <clears throat> and that was last year in our first year in the I Awards. So in order to accurately align our awards with the national I Awards, we've made some changes to the awards. And you'll hear me tonight announce domains. Now, what we've done is to group categories into or under domains. For instance, we have the development domain, and it incorporates the three categories of new product, research and development, and tools. In each domain, I will tell you what the categories are that are covered uh, by that domain. And for each domain, there is an overall winner. And for each category, there are merit awards, though not every category has got a merit award. And as I mentioned earlier, all Waita winners and merits will proceed to the National I Awards. Under the tools category, we're thinking of uh, nominating Howard Sattler, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> in addition to the domains, ladies and gentlemen, we have retained the Waita Regional Award and also the Waita Achiever Award has also been retained. That is our premier award, and they will continue to remain as standalone awards. Now, this dinner that uh, we're about to enjoy tonight, this presentation with what is 
the longest, the widest screen in Western Australia provided by Corporate Theatre Productions. Oh yeah. We've uh, hanged the expense, we said. <laughs> Let's do this proper. And we have done that. So tonight we're going to showcase the innovation, the advances being made by our local industry, which has always and continues to punch way above its weight. And I've, I've told you this before, but I remember back in the 80s when I was on the wireless, that's radio for younger people. <laughs> I remember doing stories with, with uh, companies here in Western Australia. One I remember distinctly, but not its name. It had developed some software which had sold to the Bell Telephone Company in America. That was back in the 80s, people. We've been doing this a long time, and we've been doing it well. But now, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome you on behalf of the organizing committee, let me bring to the microphone Mr. Arnold Wong, the Waita chairman. Please make him welcome. Thank you, Jerry. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Australian Computer Society, the Waita organizing committee, it is truly my pleasure to welcome all of you here tonight to celebrate with all of our finalists in our 22nd year of recognizing and promoting the achievement of Western Australian ICT industry. Tonight is a big night. Not only do we have a record number of finalists, you have just been entertained by a record number of performers. Thank you to Miss Celia Christmas and the Perth Modern School, the 50 gifted and talented young men and women all being well, some of them will be inspired by some of our finalists here tonight to actually embrace ICT as the career of choice. Our MC, Jerry Gannon, has already acknowledged our VIPs here tonight, so I would like to extend my welcome to our sponsors, to the supporting associations, to the finalists, and most importantly, to all of you here. You have set another record, a record number of 450 guests at the Y8 dinner. Welcome also to my fellow ACS WA branch executive members and the ACS national um, committee members and also the I Awards steering committee, as well as those who made it possible tonight, the WIATA organizing committee members and judges. This year, the judges have shortlisted from over 100 requests for information and a record number of 60 plus submissions. And once again, well done and congratulations to the 37 finalists. We're here tonight to celebrate your success and to find out who will be representing WA in the 2013 I Awards in August. And then, like some of our past winners, as Jerry have said, you have the chance to represent Australia in the awards of the awards, the Asia Pacific Information, Communication and Technology Awards to be held in Hong Kong in November. Keep an eye out for the information during the sponsors loop later on. Last year, when Waita had his 21st birthday, I borrowed from Slim Dusty in celebrating Waita's 21st, the words from looking forward, looking back. Tonight, I will paraphrase Neil Patrick Harris' opening number at the Tony Awards earlier this week at, on Broadway. Waita, after all, is the Oscars for ICT industry. So tonight, Waita will go bigger. It's our greatest night and we are raring to go. We have made it bigger. Who will take home a trophy? We still don't know. But yes, it is now much bigger. But we can always promise you a truly inspiration show. And with that, I wish all of our finalists the very best of luck. And to everyone here tonight, enjoy and be inspired by the finalist presentation. It is now my pleasure to invite to the podium the Honorable Michael Minchin, the Minister for Commerce, Attorney General, representing the Premier for his opening address. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Arnold, and thank you, Jerry. And uh, welcome to distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening representing the Premier of Western Australia, the Honourable Colin Barnett. MLA, and uh, to welcome you all to the 22nd Western Australian Information Technology and Telecommunications Awards, where we are gathered to recognise and to support the outstanding performance 
and contributions by members of the local information technology and telecommunications community. Even before taking on my new role as Minister for Commerce, I was aware of the contribution that this sector has made towards shaping the future of this state, particularly given the enabling role that IT and telecommunication plays in driving greater productivity and efficiency in Western Australia's economy. There is an extraordinary array of innovative, innovative applications and technologies being developed on a weekly basis in Western Australia. And this state is also home to some of Australia's leading digital infrastructure. The Pawsey Centre is just one example, a $100 million supercomputing facility that will enable the state's universities and a number of local science facilities to explore large data sets in the area of radio astronomy, the geosciences and medicine and potentially leading to new discoveries. The rise of the internet and, and trends such as social networking, e-commerce and creative new media are driving the creation of more and more data. Thankfully, in Western Australia, we're seeing the emergence of infrastructure and expertise to assist in managing this data explosion. We are well served by a number of state-of-the-art data centres providing a means for the storage and management of this big data phenomenon. Many of the organisations that operate these facilities are represented here tonight and I acknowledge the capability that they provide our state as being a world-class digital location. And then there is the ever-increasing demand to be connected to almost anywhere in the world. The Western Australian Government recognised this in 2010 when it committed to the Regional Mobile Communications Project, the RMCP. Through a Western Australian Government contribution of $39.2 million from the Royalties for Regions program, Telstra is deploying 113 new or upgraded mobile data base stations across this state to improve coverage along the state's major highways and routes between various regional centres. The government's funding has encouraged an overall investment of $106 million in improved mobile coverage for the regions. The government also recognises the importance of the digital economy and has provided funding assistance to help small to medium businesses gain better understanding of the benefits of going online. More than $480,000 has been funded under the WA Business Online Program to various industry and not-for-profit organisations to engage their members in exploring ways to grow their businesses through the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, as more and more of the state's economy comes under the influence of digital technology, the expertise, the knowledge and the ingenuity that abounds within this room tonight will prove invaluable. I have encouraged the Department of Commerce to work collaborative, collaboratively with the sector in order to enable the state to maximise maximi the benefits of IT and telecommunications for all West Australians and to make Western Australia a truly world-class digital destination. And as an example of this collaboration, I'll take the opportunity tonight to formally announce the establishment of the Western Australian Digital Pavilion in partnership with the local ICT sector at the Innovation Centre in the Bentley Technology Park. The pavilion is to provide a dedicated space to showcase the latest in dig digital technology, applications and content in order to assist leaders across industry, government and the community to better understand the opportunities presented through the digital economy. I'd also like to extend an invitation to all the finalists and winners tonight to take part in a showcase of Western Australian ICT technology and ingenuity in the inaugural exhibition at the Pavilion, which will be launched in July this year. In conclusion, the State is proud to support WAITA and acknowledge the people who design, who build, who operate and maintain the information networks, as well as the sophisticated applications that connect and support our day-to-day -day functions. On behalf of the State Government, I extend my congratulations to all this evening's finalists and winners. 
You're the ones driving this new technology. You're the ones that are driving the innovations that transform our lives and deliver the solutions that will address major challenges facing this state and the world. And for that, I extend my and our state's appreciation and thanks. Tonight's Waiita winners will go on to represent Western Australia in the National Eye Awards, which are to be held later this year. I wish you all the best of luck. If Western Australia's performances in other fields is anything to go by, you will do well, you'll do the state proud, and you'll do your industry proud. And you'll have every, every reason to, uh, to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have an enjoyable evening and uh, take the opportunity to exchange views and opinions and opportunities with your fellows in this industry, one of the key industries of the future. Thank you very much for the organisers. Congratulations to the ACS and to all of those who have managed to get their way into the finals this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of us who haven't a hope in hell of winning a prize tonight, um, <laughs> an award, I should say, there is the, uh, the door prize, uh, as we call it. It is a buffet dinner for two guests up to the value of $170 at the Hyatt Regency Perth's award-winning cafe restaurant. And uh, I will, uh, uh, Tony Simpson, the Minister for Local Government, who's been a great friend of uh, Waita for a number of years now, I'll ask Tony to draw a number out of the box which Sue's got. Uh, drum roll. Just imagine it, that's it. Thank you, Tony. C thank you very much, uh, Minister uh, Simpson, ladies and gentlemen, Minister for Local Government. If we can have the house lights up momentarily as you look under your side plate and look for C, a blue ticket C98. Blue ticket C98. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. <laughs> if you have that, can you please bring it up here? Yes, I see a man walking with purpose. And the winner, ladies and gentlemen, John Stockbridge. Give him a round of applause. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you of uh, an innovation tonight. Uh, tonight, we are tweeting. Oh, yes. Uh, I, myself, personally, have been on Twitter for about oh, 18 months now. I have, uh, as of today, 363 followers. I have no idea why they're following me. But I'm, I'm keeping them. And um, uh, up to 18 months ago, I used to think that Twitter was uh, too many tweets with uh, too much to say of too little value to too many people with too much time on their hands. And I still think that, but I'm, nonetheless, I'm on Twitter. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are tweeting, and the hashtag is hashtag YEta. We're keeping it simple, hashtag YEta. If you don't know what Twitter is, there will be somebody at your table who will tell you what it is. Now, I'm actually going to um, start the ball rolling, and I'm going to... Can you turn up the lights again, Dan, please? I'm actually going to take a picture of the audience. Now, if you're not supposed to be here... <laughs> if you told your wife you had this works thing to go to, then it might be an idea to uh, look away now as I take a picture. There we go. And I will tweet that and say that these are people who are helping us celebrate the finest. <laughs> so many men in penguin suits. And, and at the breaks tonight, you will see all of these um, tweets on the tweet wall, as we call it. All right, so it's hashtag Waita, and you can tweet photographs as well. Now, Telstra customers, you're not going to have any problem, I understand. Martin Bain will be happy to hear that. Optus customers, you may be in a bit of bother. <laughs> That's what I'm told. 
All right. So let's get on with it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, entree will now be served. Whoops, where are we? Yes, entree will now be served, and then we will be back with the first of our awards, which, of course, is the Peter Fillory Award for Tertiary Student Projects. Enjoy your entree. Welcome back, and if I could have you seated and paying attention, we're going to come to the first of our awards for the evening. Can I firstly um, congratulate you for your tweeting? You've embraced the concept magnificently. We're seeing photographs and smart-ass comments which Twitter lends itself to naturally. And you may have seen a tweet up there from uh, Louise Burke from Ghana. Louise, as you may remember, was with us here last year. She was then the social affairs reporter with the West Australian. And Louise left the West a short time after that and has been doing some humanitarian work. And she's in Ghana and she's thinking of us tonight. So if you see her Twitter handle come up, send her a tweet and tell her that uh, we're thinking of her because she's thinking of us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the first domain to be presented tonight is the Peter Fillory Award for Tertiary Student Projects. And this award recognizes the most outstanding project undertaken by a tertiary or undergraduate student or group of students. And the award is named in honor of the late Peter Fillory, who encouraged students to undertake practical project work as an essential element of a learning process. This year, there were six tertiary student projects chosen as finalists. One from Curtin University, three from Edith Cowan University, and two from Murdoch University. To announce the winner in the category, please welcome Platinum Sponsor, the Australian Computer Society, ACS Foundation, and Mr. John Ridge AM, Executive Director of the ACS Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, our first student project is a team from Curtin University comprising Dio Budaharo, Scott Lambert, Anich Shretza and Stephanie Pearl Xiao with Project Zero Harm. The hosting organization was Deloitte. Project Zero Harm is an integration of smartphone and web technologies transforming safety reporting into an automated, efficient and accurate process for managing incidents and hazards. Reports are structured to forward details on the nature and impact of hazards or incidents. On remote sites, location is determined through GPS, Wi-Fi or mobile tower position. The website application captures current and historical data facilitating efficient response and generating statistical information for safety intelligence. Tailored for the resource sector, Zero Harm fosters a culture of proactive safety reporting, equipping organisations with effective capability to mitigate risk. Innovative incorporation of gaming techniques maximises user interest with an achievement system as encouragement to become more conscious of the working environment. <laughs> 